Well, it's great to be with you all as we start celebrating our Together Christmas campaign on this Sunday morning. It doesn't really feel like Christmas, where there's a bit cold and bleak. Uh, we're pre-recording this in the office, but it's still early morning. The weather's still not fantastic. <laughs> Adam, it's always great to have you with us. What's on your Christmas jumper then? Well, as I said, I was nervous when you said, Carl, about because we were doing together at Christmas, but wearing a Christmas jumper. I actually have the, uh, I'll just, there we are. Oh, look, look at that. That's I've got that. One most famously by uh, Kate Botley, the vicar of Gogglebox. But in some churches, they love it when I wear this in the uh, rundown to, to Christmas. And in other places they go, don't wear it. But uh I thought, given the fact that we're, we're thinking about together at Christmas, I thought, and you and I had said on, on Messenger before we would record this, let's put our Christmas jumpers on. I thought I'd give this a wear this morning. Well, I thought you were going to come with your Brussels sprouts waistcoat, so... Uh, Shh! I said I said, I said I could, I said I've got something to share and we're running down to Christmas and now we've oh, it all. <laughs> oh, we, we're going to be blessed to that at some point then. Indeed! <laughs> well, you know, it's great that we... We got through prayer week and we had a little lull period, but now uh, gearing up for the Christmas season. And um, it's been great to see how things have come together. We had lots of ideas after the summer about, you know, what could we do, what would be useful for people, beneficial, how could we bless people. So I, th I think as we have progressed along, uh, it's been really, really good to see all of that come together. And we're just in the throes now of editing the last videos. And, um, you know, it's out there. So if you visit together at Christmas.com, uh, you'll see a range of resources that we are putting uh, out and together. So just for the list, but then we'll explain it. We've got uh, an Advent devotional that Stephen Durgis has written, a great friend of the ministry. He's, he writes a number of uh, the free devotionals that we put out each year. Um, we only put that up uh, on Sunday and already it's been downloaded nearly 500 times. So, um, you know, it's obviously popular. Uh, it's great that people don't have to pay for anything. And, um, you know, Stephen's writing as a former pastor, Baptist pastor is terrific. Then we, we're looking at um, the Advent Blessing. Lots of work gone into this from um, Lisa and Wendy Thomas. Uh, we'll come on to that in a minute. And then the, we've come up with this idea of what, would, what could we do together as an MPN family of members uh, to actually bless people on our street. So we, we canvassed around and we, we look at that and we'll come on to that in a minute. And that takes us into New Year, into New Year's Eve. And then we, right at the end, we'll give you a little bit of a flavour of what's happening. But um, you've read the Advent Guide, Adam. What, what did you make of it? The Advent I, Guide. I love the Advent Guide. Stephen is, as you say, a very gifted uh, writer and communicator. And it's great to be able to work with, with Stephen again. And actually, it kind of picks up on the conversation that uh, for those of you that were watching on Friday morning, uh, Lisa and I were having, I, we talked, Lisa and I, very much about prayer. We talked about the importance of taking time out to pray and also to go and be a blessing, which linked into the kind of menu ideas that we'll talk about again in this conversation in a few minutes. But also I, I made the comment and I said, it is a conversation for another time about how Advent is the reminder that we need to get into God's word as well. Yeah. It's prayer and Bible reading. Sometimes I think okay. we, div we divorce the two. And actually what I think about the, the devotional that's, that, that Stephen's written for us is it's a great thing to get you to reflect upon the word, to get you into reading your Bible. Um, and I think that's just crucially important for us. I don't want to sound uh, preachy in that, but actually, if you're looking for a devotional that helps you walk through each day as we run through this Advent period, then Stephen Durges's guide, I, I wholeheartedly uh, recommend, whether you're reading that as an individual. You know, we are a couple of days into the devotional, but there's still opportunity for you to go back and look at it. But also, if you're thinking, I'm a church leader, and I'd love to give something for my uh, churches to to be blessed with as 
we go through this Advent season and then this uh, devotional is something that works in that context too. So it's a great, great devotional, really easy read, but also a challenging read. We've done a number of conversations over the last year, Carl, and we have used the line uh, again and again and again about how sometimes stuff is is a, a, a compelling read, but it's a hard read. And I think, you know, one of the things that I get about reading Stephen's material is you 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 get in what you put out. You, you know, you 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 receive out of it what you put into it. Uh, and actually, that sense about if you actually genuinely seek to engage and you read the passages and you read the reflections and you pray about it you will be very blessed. Yeah, and, you know, uh, from his Baptist pastor days, uh, he knows um, the level at which you place challenge and you uh, look for reflection. You look to take some time out and think about what's been written. So, like you say, you know, I'm, I'm always blessed when I read some of Stephen's devotional materials, and this is no exception, it's excellent. I think it's just that whole thing of the fact that we've had Stephen write for us a number of times throughout uh, throughout the year. Uh, and again, this is a great one that kind of takes us into this next season, this next season of Advent. And so really delighted that uh, as MPN, we have a partnership with uh, Stephen to be able to communicate uh, what he writes to uh, to our members. Yeah. And then as part of Advent, uh, we're also publishing um some copy that lisa hutton and wendy thomas have written they've written advent blessings for every day um it's a lovely written blessing the reflection and the prayer and lisa's been really beavering away in the background drawing an illustration each day that accompanies that so you can download it as a pdf you can download it as individual sheets of graphics uh, like an a4 size or a square size and we in the, the throes of editing the final videos so the, the videos are already on youtube where um both lisa and wendy record what they've written um and then we put a nice jingle either side of that so so for no other reason than to feel blessed uh we wanted to put this out there i know there's tons of people still praying through the Facebook group. It's amazing to see some prayers these days having 400 people rally around that, that prayer request. But this, we, we thought this would be more um, how NPN could speak a blessing, could be a blessing uh, of encouragement to each and every person that connects with us. So we're really pleased about that. What, what did you feel about how that came together? I, I love this. I think the great thing, Carl, as I said to, to when I co- had a conversation with uh, uh, Lisa the other day, let's show into the kind of kind of side door of what's going in on in MPN. Actually, blessings is going to be a big thing for us as we move forward. And actually, one of the things that I've most loved about helping work with Lisa and Wendy in putting the material together is that sense at which this is a really good, strong, firm foundation in order to get us thinking about uh, blessing. And actually, what greater way is there, and what greater time of year is there than to have that reminder that God wants to give us his blessing? Mm-hmm. And that's why, for me, I think it's really encouraging um, to see them go out the the advent blessings go out each morning at six on our uh, youtube channel they go out onto the facebook group but also the the great thing is the fact that they're being shared they're being shared all over social media and so i encourage you if you uh, are on twitter then go to our twitter feed and they go out each day on uh, twitter and do share them and we are seeing people do that and we're seeing other ministries Uh, doing it too so it's really encouraging really exciting and for me that's the great thing that i think that this advent blessing series does for us it says you know we want people to do stuff and we'll cut again coming back to the menu in a few minutes but actually we also want to just remind people that god wants to speak his blessing over them and i just think the way in which wendy and lisa have come together to craft that is just absolutely amazing they've prayed for hours and i you know 
It's not something that they've done kind of uh, in, in five minutes and gone, we'll just create 25, 26 recordings and I'll just record them kind of really quickly. They've spent hours praying about them. And that's why I think it's great to see that people are are using them. And again, I encourage people to go back and, and share them. Yeah, and I think it was Paul saying, who does our social media for us, uh, the first day on Twitter, uh, that video was watched 3,000 times, um, which is quite incredible, you know. Um, I think that's the power of the growing movement of NPN is it becomes a platform to reach many people, which is excellent. I think sometimes, look, I just, just want to pick up on that. I think sometimes we can become a bit, we can become a bit reluctant to, to share. Mm. And actually one of the things that I, I, you know, say unashamedly, actually, if there is content that we are putting out, whether it be the Advent Blessings, whether it be the devotional from Stephen Dirges, please, please, please share it. You know, I, uh, Lisa said she would love it if people were able to take the videos of the Advent Blessings and put them into some of the WhatsApp groups that you're a part of. Because again, yeah. I, I don't know what I don't know what kind of WhatsApp groups you're a part of, Carl, but some of them are a little bit heavy at the moment, particularly in this kind of season as we're navigating ourselves through to Christmas and there's still a lot of uncertainty. Actually just put a blessing into the WhatsApp group randomly but strategically, just to simply remind people that yeah. God wants to give us his blessing and it will change the atmosphere of the WhatsApp group. And that only takes like five seconds. Uh you know, but if you spend that five seconds of time, how many people are you going to touch? That may brighten someone's day and suddenly, uh, you know, their day is completely different after that. Now, on the, the care side, we really had to have a good think about what we were going to try and do for Christmas, knowing uh, COVID was still around, people were still self-isolating, Obviously, England um, came out on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, sorry, of the lockdown, and then the tier system kicked in immediately, mm -hmm. uh, putting most of the country into tier two or tier three lockdown. Now, even when we were thinking about this pre-summer, what would we do for Christmas, and our thoughts went to, could we encourage people to physically invite the neighbor around for Christmas dinner and so on and so on. Um, that's not wise because if they are, have got an underlying health condition, um, you know, that there was all kinds of complications uh, in that. So what we've come up with, if you can see this, this is like a menu you would have got at a restaurant and we got one for Christmas Eve, one for Christmas day, uh, one for boxing day, and one for New Year's Eve. And the idea is really simple that um, you pick three things to do per day. Now, they're easy things. There's some harder ones on there as well, but you get a starter, a main course, just like a, a menu and a dessert. And then you, you start to think through, well, I could do that one there and I could do the third one here and I might be able to do the last one there. Or you might just be able to do one of the entire menu. Uh, that, that, that's fine. But things like um, you mentioned WhatsApp. We were, we're actually saying create or use a street WhatsApp group to start the Christmas chatter. What's everyone doing? Making sure people uh, who are lonely are communicated with. Uh, from the main course, ask a neighbor if they needed any last minute shopping on Christmas Eve. So you, you know, this is all there now. You can go and download it. It's a PDF. It's really easy. Um, I think about 130 people are doing it already. We haven't even got to Christmas Eve yet. So I'm, I'm hoping we'll get to about 1,000 people doing something on here because that means there's 1,000 acts of kindness, one or more acts of kindness. 1,000 people get blessed. 1,000 people get touched. And... Um, on the Christmas Day one, I'm just going to pick out a couple of uh, things we can do there. Um, we've suggested watching the Archbishop of Canterbury's Christmas message, re reminding a few neighbours to watch the Queen's speech. Um, I know there was another one about daily hope, wasn't there? I'm not sure what day that was on. Um, 
you know, so there's there's plenty there that you can have a look at and make sure that um, kind of ticking it off uh, the need of the neighbours and making sure that's that's really helpful to them and a blessing to your street. And as you said, Adam, we really want to hear the stories that come back from this because um, I know speaking to some people through COVID and then the second lockdown, they were just like devastated, depressed, feeling really anxious, fearful. Is this ever going to end? You know, uh, great news now that the Pfizer vaccine's been approved and uh, will roll out in the next few days. But that's going to take a while to get around everyone. Um, the most vulnerable now before Christmas and everyone else after. So, you know, this is a great opportunity to really get into that, helping people. We'll certainly be doing this in our family and see what we can do around the street. And then the last thing, also on Christmas Day, what, what have we got to share? On Christmas Day, we've got a Christmas blessing that you will see on, on Christmas Day, the kind of two, Lisa and Wendy have recorded one of the kind of normal blessings that they've been releasing each day, but we've got a longer extended uh, Christmas uh, blessing that will be out. Uh, it's available now. So you might want to put it in your packs if you're posting things in your communities. But just the thing that reminds people of the blessing of Christmas. Uh, and that's really exciting. Carl, while you were talking, I wasn't playing Candy Crush on my phone, honest. <laughs> I, I, I saw some uh, statistics that came out this week um, from the Royal Voluntary Services. And uh, it says that uh, one in six people are dreading Christmas. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. That's one of the statistics. And uh, one in five are concerned that they're not going to see anybody over this Christmas period because of the fact that with the with the tears and the challenge and everything else, people have gone, I'm going to be resilient and I'm going to stay on my own. And so I just want to commend uh, the menu idea to you. But also, as was said about the, the kind of uh, Christmas blessing, could you do, if you do nothing else on the menu, but we want you to, we'd love to and encourage you to do so. Could you share that Christmas blessing on Christmas Day? Because maybe you might be able to help. If these statistics are to be uh, believed, that one in five people will, sh will, not, uh, will not see anybody on Christmas Day this year. So we want to be those that bring a little bit of light and a little bit of cheer. It's interesting that those statistics say that it's not older people, yeah. it's the, the, the population at large won't see people. And so we would love you to share the Christmas blessing. And that again is available on the website, togetherchristmas.com. Yeah, and you know, we are updating that now each day. We'll be putting... Uh, as as Adam said, the Christmas blessings already there. It's been downloaded already uh, over a hundred times. The the devotional is already there. That's uh, nearing five hundred downloads now. The the videos. There's a link to a YouTube playlist of all of the Advent videos. The Advent PDFs, which you can download, uh, are also already available. So please have a look at that. Um, we try to make as many of these resources available for free as, as we're able. And uh, after that, we're gearing up then to the new year. And I'd love you to uh, really put a date in your diary that when you get up on New Year's Day, um, what we've decided to do for the new year uh, is two things. Number one, uh, join with us and come on Zoom with us at 10 a.m., on New Year's Day morning, uh, not too early. So if you did stay up to see the new year in, you still got time to have a sleep, but uh, we're partnering with the National Day of Prayer and Worship, uh, Jonathan All the Ladies Ministry, to um, basically dedicate the new year to the Lord. Everything that's gonna happen in 2021, our, our individual lives, our family, our street, um, and then, you know, the wider nation, we, 
we're having a probably an hour's prayer meeting we're going to take communion um we're going to dedicate ourselves and um our ministries and our churches to the lord for this coming year we are hoping that a few hundred people will turn out for that uh you know please be with us we'll give you all of the details you can still see that um through uh, start with prayer.com, which is an end of web web page. It'll be going up in the next week or so. And then in the afternoon, you can get all of the details from NPN from our <coughs> web page and milewithjesus.com. So why, why that particular name? Well, once we've made the dedication prayer in the morning, we're actually encouraging everyone sometime in the afternoon to take a prayer walk around your neighborhood walk for a mile a mile with jesus.com and then you can raise up your hand you can pray over the houses on your street you can pray over the the little businesses that are there the doctor surgery the police station the post office etc that we'll be as individuals taking spiritual responsibility for the street that we live on we'll be making sure we cover our streets and our neighborhoods in prayer for the whole of next year so that that really excites me there's nothing like starting the year in prayer there's nothing like speaking a declaration of blessing uh, dedicating our lives our families lives the lives of our church uh, members congregations our street and the wider nation to the Lord for next year. There is, you know, uh, nothing better, as you say, Carl, but uh, A Mile with Jesus is not new for NPN. Mm -hmm. It's something that uh, Rachel Fowler had the, the vision for a number of years ago now. Yeah. But it feels like as we've prayed about how A Mile with Jesus fits into uh, the work of the Neighbourhood Prayer Network, Actually, after everything that's happened this year, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly, if we're honest, the good, the bad and the ugly. Actually, this is the time where we want to encourage people to do that strategic mile. There are many other people who use the Mile with Jesus resources at another time, and we encourage you to keep doing that. But what would it be like if we united as a ministry, united as Christians to pray? And dedicate ourselves to the to the Lord. And again, as Carl was saying, we'd love to know where you were, uh, where you uh, joined in from. Whether you can join us at ten o'clock in the morning or not, uh, we'd love to have hundreds of people. That's the prayer yeah. that, that that we're praying. But even if you can't, and you think, oh, I want to go and walk my uh, community on uh, that uh, New Year's Day, please get in touch. And let us know where you're doing from, because it'd be interesting to see just exactly how many individuals do it. And if you are a church and you're encouraging people to do this as a church, tell your church person who's going to liaise with us about how many streets we've done, because it'd be interesting to know. There's been a lot of people who've been prayer walking. You know, we've chatted before as a ministry about how we've seen an increase in prayer walking in the last year because of this pandemic. Let's not just prayer walk but let's dedicate 2021 to the lord yeah and you'll have to register this time for that prayer meeting um we want to make sure that you get the right and easy login details there's absolutely no cost we're not going to share your data with anyone so don't worry about that but we want to make sure because this is invite only to members and you know your churches uh, that we get that right so we we are believing for hundreds of people to join in on that uh, prayer day what a great time and way to start the year so adam thanks for joining in this morning uh, would you lead us as we come to the end of this little segment in prayer and mm -hmm. uh, we look forward to seeing you next time friends let's just pray let's just pray over all of the stuff that Carl and I have talked about this morning. It is Sunday, and uh, some of you may well be watching this before you go to church or after you've been to church. But actually, one of the things that I just want us to pray this morning as we come into land, and actually, whatever it is that God is saying to you right now as you watch this conversation, 
you would respond because it's not about another project another thing that we think we should be doing this is what we believe god has asked us to to do at this time to to change some of the spiritual atmosphere on many of the streets in our nation and so we need you to get behind and walk with us and and be part of it and i believe as some people have watched this today god is calling you he's challenging you to step up don't put it off but to step up i don't know what that means but I think for some of you, that's what God is saying. And so I just want to pray as we come into land, as Carl said, that actually each of us would just pray over what we've heard, asking that God would uh, use us in whichever way uh, he's calling us to do. Even if that's just simply to tell somebody else about the fact that he wants them to get involved. But we, we would do that. So, friends, let's just pray. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your blessing that you bestow upon each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who comes alongside us. Lord, in this season of Advent, we pray that as believers and as churches, we would long for you afresh, We would long to know you greater and deeper. Lord, I pray that we would take some time out over this Advent season in order to prepare ourselves spiritually for this festive season. Lord, as we reflect upon the conversation that uh, we've listened to this morning, Lord, I pray that you would just help us, that you would help us to not just look inwards to our own uh, needs and our own families, but actually enable us to look outwards, to serve others. So, Lord, I pray for those who are watching this, (coughs) that are feeling your call to engage in the menu of ideas, to go and be a blessing in their communities. Lord, I pray that they would be so touched by your spirit that they would say yes and amen now to taking and rising to that challenge of supporting those in our communities who most need just simple acts of kindness this Christmas. And Lord, I pray for those that need to go deeper into God, that need to go deeper into reading your word. I pray that through the resource that Stephen has produced, that they will be blessed. Lord, I thank you that in this Advent season, you call us to long for you more. And so, Lord, I commit all of the conversation that we've had to you, asking for your blessing upon each of the different areas of our Together at Christmas uh, project initiative but actually lord but it would also it would help it would help those of us to uh, seek to step out and to serve you more so lord we thank you for this conversation we thank you for the work of neighborhood prayer network lord i thank you for each and every person who's contributed to the uh, production of this uh, material but also for those who will now step forward and seek to do stuff in their own communities Lord, we ask a blessing upon each and every one of us this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Adam. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, don't forget, please, will you click the subscribe button, the little notification bell. And as we keep finding out, every time you click one of those thumbs up icons in the middle, uh, the video gets spread a lot more around YouTube. So a lot more people will see it. If you could do that, that'd be fantastic. Have a great week and we'll catch you again soon. God bless. God bless.